Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new super efficient build guide. This time we're going to be taking a look at fuel. In this we're going to be covering how to turn 120 crude oil into fuel using the regular recipe, residual fuel using the heavy oil residue alternate recipe, diluted packaged fuel using the heavy oil residue alternate recipe, and the blender diluted fuel alternate recipe with the heavy oil residue alternate. And my hope is that with these easy layouts, which you can also find on satisfactorytips.com, you'll be able to build a fuel plant and get that running regardless of your level. And I do want to stress all of this is going to be done by a single oil extractor on a single pure crude oil node. And one final thing before we get started, I have decided to upload this save over to my Patreon page. So this will be updated every time we have a new guide that goes out. So you'll be able to find each of the layouts available on there. So let's get started. The first recipe that we're going to be talking about is the normal fuel recipe. This fuel recipe is available right from the start and it does produce both fuel and polymer resin from crude oil. Now, one thing that's important to note is that the polymer resin can be used for different products, um, should you wish, should you have them unlocked, such as residual plastic. We're not going to worry about that in this series, so we will be sinking any of the excess um, polymer resin that we have available. This layout is super easy to produce. All you need is a three by six layout. Uh, on your grid, we're going to place down two refineries and these are going to be receiving all of the crude oil, as you can see here, and that is going to turn it into fuel and then head along to the fuel generators. At the top of this grid, we're also going to have a awesome sink. Again, you don't actually need this for your build, uh, but you can see how we are sinking all of that polymer resin. If you're not sinking it, you're going to have to make sure that you're using it because if the manifold fills up you will stop producing the fuel. This fuel then runs across to seven fuel generators. Six of these fuel generators will be running at 100% whilst the final generator will be running at 69% clock speed. If you've set this up correctly those seven generators should be producing about 1005 megawatts. For some reason it is actually generating a little bit more here it's 1010 um, I don't know where that's come from as everything is clocked to the right speed that it should be. But there you are, that is our first and very easy recipe for anyone who's just getting started with fuel. The only real downside is that it's really inefficient versus the other recipes, which we will be moving on to now. For our next recipe, we're going to be using the residual fuel recipe. And along with that, we're going to be using the heavy oil residue alternate recipe. The reason that we're using the heavy oil residue alternate recipe is that it allows us to produce a lot of heavy oil residue. Uh, we also have a byproduct of polymer resin which again can be sunk but then we can turn this heavy oil residue into fuel. You can see that we can use this directly to become fuel and it actually allows us to get a little bit more efficiency out of it. Alternate recipes can add a lot of bang for your buck in terms of efficiency, but in order to find them, you do need to go out and search out for the hard drives in Rex. For this layout, you're going to have to do a seven by eight grid. And for this, we're going to first start off by placing four refineries. These are going to be taking the crude oil and turning it into the heavy oil residue. All of the heavy oil residue is then connected along one pipeline and then will run into three more refineries. These three refineries will be producing residual fuel and be clocked at 2.67%. So one of these refineries will have to be set to 67% clock speed. If you look down on the pipeline, one thing to, I should point out is there is a tiny pump. This is unpowered, it's the little blue one just before the front three refineries for residual fuel. All this is doing is stopping backflow. That means that any heavy oil residue from the prior four refineries that travels along the pipeline and goes through the unpowered, pipe, uh, unpowered pump will not go back on itself. So it will be stuck and 
have to be used by those three fuel refineries. These three refineries will produce enough fuel to run 8.9 fuel generators and this will be providing you with a total of 1,335 megawatts, which is 2.3 generators more than the previous setup while still using the same amount of crude oil and you're actually getting some more resources from the polymer resin. The next recipe that we're going to be using is the diluted packaged fuel recipe. It takes 120 crude oil to 320 packaged fuel, which is a lot and is probably the most famous alternate recipe in the game because it allows you to go from 8.9 generators with 120 crude oil to a total of 26.7 fuel generators. That's an exponential increase. And with an extractor on a pure node, if we overclock that to 100, 250%, that's 300 crude oil in a single pipeline. That translates to well over 60 fuel generators from a single node. That's why it is so famous. So let's get into it. For this setup, you're going to need a nine by 11 grid. In the bottom right, we have the four refineries. They're using the same heavy oil residue alt that we used previously in the last build. However, you are going to have to unlock in the hub. I believe it's the milestone that's advanced packaging solutions, which allows you to package water and fuel. And most importantly, you're going to need the packaged fuel dilute, uh, pack diluted packaged fuel alternate recipe. Oh, that's a bit of a mouthful, which takes the packaged water, which we're going to produce and the heavy oil that we're producing to create packaged uh, fuel. In regards to the crude oil to heavy oil residue um, refineries at the bottom right, you will have to send all of the excess polymer resin to the awesome sink. And then all of that heavy oil residue is going to head up to a total of six more refineries. Five of them are going to run at 100% clock speed, producing um, alternate packaged uh, diluted package fuel and then the one on the end that's this one on the left in this case is going to be set to 33.33 percent clock speed along with the heavy oil residue we're also going to need to package water so let's have a look at that section before moving on we're going to need a total of 320 water this can be put along a mark ii pipe so notice how we have two water extractors, they're running at 100% each, producing a total of 240 water. And then we have a third extractor on the left before heading into a Mark II pipe, which is producing 80 water for us, which is a total of a 66.66% overclock or underclock even. This water is then sent up the left-hand side of the build and into a manifold, which is sent to six packages. These packages are going to be running at 533% clock speed. So one of those packages needs to be underclocked to 33.33%. For this build, you're also going to need empty canisters to add to this line. We've created a closed loop, which I'll show off in a moment. But for this, you're going to want to make sure that you add about 10 stacks of empty canisters. I've done this with a single industrial container here and a manifold um, and a merger just before entering this manifold line. These empty canisters are fed with water to be produced into packaged water. And then the refineries send the packaged fuel, which is done with the packaged water onto the packages to be unpacked which sends the fuel off to the generators and those empty canisters from the um, um packages are then sent back into a loop feeding the, the water packages once again. In front of those six refineries that you've placed for the diluted package fuel, you're going to place six packages. These are going to unpack that fuel like I've just mentioned. They need to be at the same clock speed as the refineries that are behind them. So the first five on the from the left here, as we're doing this on the opposite side, are running at 100% clock speed. And then the final one on the right is running at 33.33% clock speed. This fuel is then sent off towards 
all of the fuel generators, you'll need a Mark II pipe because there's over, well, there's 320 going through, which is more than the maximum capacity of a single Mark I. And the solid output for all of those packages will be sending those empty canisters back around to the other packages. And this will power those 26.7 fuel generators. Not bad. Now at this point, if you are finding the video helpful, please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to move on to the final recipe here. Now this one, similar to the diluted package fuel that we have in front of us, is producing the exact same amount of power. This particular recipe is only unlocked once you've unlocked blenders and is so much easier to produce versus the diluted package fuel and is by far probably the best recipe when it comes to fuel. Again, it does use the heavy oil residue alternate recipe that we used prior with the four refineries in the bottom right producing heavy oil residue and also sending that polymer resin to the awesome sink. But from there, the heavy oil residue just runs into four blenders and we also need 320 water, just like the previous layout, to be sent to those blenders as well. Here you can see the refineries taking that oil and then we run the heavy oil residue across and then up into a manifold of the four blenders. Currently, the machines are turning off and on. That is probably due to some backflow. So if you do want to stop that, you can use a turned off pump to stop the oil coming back, like I've done here to stop the heavy oil residue back flowing. So for this, you'll have four blenders. One of them is only going to be set to 20% clock speed, which I've done on the far right. These are all producing the blender diluted fuel. And then all of this is going on to another 26.67 fuel generators. One thing to note is that it will take a while to warm up. All of the pipes need to be full in order for these to run efficient, efficiently, so it won't all turn on at once. You're going to have to give it a good 10-15 minutes. If you're still having problems, bear in mind there are some bugs with pipes at the moment, so you may need to do some re-piping. But if you do want some tips on how to better use your pipes, then do check out my fluid guide. I'll put a link in the top. But there you are, guys, my super efficient build guide on fuel setups. We cover a beginner setup, an average setup, and then your more advanced, your, your master layouts, turning that 120 crude oil into 320 fuel. Remember, if you do want help with this, we do have a written guide on this as well over on satisfactorytips.com. The link is in the description. And if you want to see this layout for yourself, then do go over to Patreon. I'll upload this today. But there you are, guys. Let me know what you'd like me to do in the next efficient build guide in the comments below. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patreon, Cerebral Tag, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and our Lunas, The Calamity, Dixie Chris, Ben, and Star, as well as our Blood moon of the day which today is bradley until next time as always ciao for now